Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my February monthly roundup. So if you're new here, the monthly roundup is a brand new series, obviously monthly, that I decided to start. And it's gonna be a combination of a bunch of different things that I've tried. It may not be favorites, but it's things that I'm rotating in, rotating out, stuff that I got that's new, and things that I just wanted to share with you all. If you watched my last monthly roundup video, you probably already know this, but since this is a new series of videos here on my channel, I just wanna mention it again. It takes a lot for me to call something a favorite. If I wanted to do favorites videos, you may barely ever see me post a video because there are also a lot of things that I just constantly use over and over and over again. So I wouldn't really be sharing too much. So I thought I'd do a monthly roundups video so I could talk about a variety of different topics, products, services, beauty things, um, books, stuff like that. Maybe what I'm watching on Netflix or something. Before we get started, if any of those things that I just mentioned sound interesting to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. But yeah, let's get right into it. So the first two items I'm gonna mention are beauty related and it's two makeup brushes right here. So this is a blush brush that I've had for a very long time. Um, it's by Real Techniques and I actually really like this brush, but it's just getting really old I've had this for several years and I think one of the issues with living in a humid climate maybe is that sometimes this kind of material it ends up getting like sticky I think it kind of melts and maybe it can't handle like the moisture in the air so that's really the reason why I'm gonna have to let it go this is like been getting stuck on other things <laughs> and if this wasn't happening like if this whole brush was made out of like what this pink part's made out of like a plastic I guess then I probably would be able to keep it but it's just becoming a mess so this is gonna go but if you're looking for an affordable blush brush I would definitely recommend this one um, yeah I, I have been using this one for years pretty much every single time I've been applying blush and I've had other ideas of what I want blush brushes to be like that just never lived up to its expectation this was actually not what I was thinking one would be like and it has been really good for me so um, just wanted to mention that and I also will be getting rid of this Eagle tools it's in all over the face powder brush and I did see that a lot of others out there really like this one and I think it's perfectly fine I just think this part is like way too big and dense for me and how I use it so yeah I haven't really been using this too much I also kind of feel like it's a little bit bulky for where I store my brushes I have a small collection of brushes maybe it might be a large collection too you know depending on your perspective but you know I'm just really trying to pare things down so I'm just gonna say goodbye to that one as well you know back back when I was interested in trying some other Eagle Tools brushes I've heard that people really like their eyeshadow brushes and things like that but like I mentioned trying to pare down probably won't be trying those anytime soon anyway unless I need to replace something but. okay so this one is pretty exciting to me it is fashion related it's not actually like an item but it is a thread up bag so hold on I'm gonna grab it it's gonna make a lot of noise so I'm gonna stop talking so it is this thread up bag right here this is actually a bag that you can get from ThreadUp to send in items. And the reason why I'm really excited to mention this because a lot of people out there are probably like, duh, I already know what ThreadUp is. I've sent them stuff before. Well, if you live, I think it's Hawaii and Alaska, you can't just go on ThreadUp's website and ask them for this like return kit. They don't accept it. <laughs> so here's the backstory. I was shopping at the local mall here, Ala Moana Center, and I went into the Madewell store. I, you know, I'm a fan of Madewell. I love their jeans. I have a few tops that I wear to work on a pretty regular basis. And I just want to, actually I wanted to go in there for a, an exchange. I ordered something online. It was like a petite fit pants and I needed to get it exchanged. And anyways, I saw they had a little stack of these um, bags on the side. It came in like a little envelope, if you will. And it said it was like thread up, you know, the, I forget what they call it. It's like a take back bag or something like that. And I saw it and I felt the need to ask the sales associate there like, Wait, I went on the ThreadUp's website like a few years ago and I can't, like, we can't send anything back from here, Hawaii. We can't, they don't accept stuff from Hawaii. She's like, actually, they have some kind of partnership with Madewell where, and I've seen it on Madewell's website as well, where 
you know, Madewell is also a brand that's very conscious about the fashion industry and how much waste that it produced. And so they've teamed up so that we can, we here in Hawaii can go to the Madewell store and pick up one of these bags and actually send clothes back, which is like amazing. There are things that I have been posting on my Poshmark or Mercari stores um, that just never sold. And you know, only, there's only so much that can be donated because sometimes, you know, depending on what, you know, whatever donation place can't sell, they also throw it away. And I'm trying to figure out better ways where I can be a little bit more sustainable, especially when it comes to fashion choices, because I am aware of the, you know, large amount of waste that it makes. So wanted to mention to any of my Hawaii friends out there, if you have been interested, thinking about wanting to do thread up for, you know, the whole time it's been around, <laughs> um, stop by the Madewell store at Ala Moana and maybe some other places too, I, I'm not sure, but it seems like there's some partnership the person who I talked to there, there were some other people asking about it too after they saw me like grab this thing and like talk to somebody about it. And yeah, you basically have to get the kit from Madewell. You can register it online and you can actually send it back. So I have yet to fill this bag up. I'm still going through things, trying to sell stuff on Mercari and Poshmark. Um, and you know, anything that is left, I'm gonna put it in here, send it back to ThreadUp, see what kind of credit I can get because I've been interested in shopping on ThreadUp as well, but I kind of wanted to like build up at least a little bit of credit before I just jump the gun and like actually buy something. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's a long story. I'm super excited about it and I wanted to let you know too because if you're here in Hawaii, that's an option on Oahu. I don't know if there's made all stores on the other islands, there might be, there might not be. But yeah, just wanted to let you guys know, I was super excited, so I needed to tell you. Okay, now we're gonna go into books. There are two, well, there are a bunch of books that I read in the month of February, but I realized I probably can't list every single book and talk a little bit about them in every single round of video because so far I've been reading like four books a month. But the two books that I wanted to mention is Talking to Strangers and So We Meet Again. I have been putting some screenshots um, of the book covers up in this video and also listing the details down below. So Talking to Strangers is by Malcolm Gladwell. It is a nonfiction book. Um, it's about a lot of historical people and events and things that happen and like communication styles that went on during that time. It's so funny because my friends and I, like I saw it, I was like, this is a popular book, like I gotta read it. And so some other friends read it with me, like at the same time. And we were just surprised. We thought it was gonna, we, I think we thought it was gonna be more of like a networking kind of thing based on the title, but it goes beyond that. So I would just suggest that um, be open-minded when you're reading this. If there are some triggering topics to you, you may or may not wanna read this or read a little bit more about this description about what this book is about because yeah, there are some like traumatic historical events that are mentioned here, also kind of current events almost-ish, like things that happened sort of recently. So just wanted to mention that before you jump and go and read this book. And the second book that I wanted to mention is a fiction book. It's called So We Meet Again. It's by Suzanne Park. And this was actually recommended to me by someone on Instagram who knows that I read a lot of books because I've been talking about that over there on Instagram a little bit, like as I've been finishing things or starting books. Um, yeah, and I just really liked the story. It was weirdly similar to my life-ish, kind of. And maybe that's why it was recommended to me by someone who follows me there. But yeah, I really enjoyed reading it. I felt some inspiration um, and hope. This is not really giving anything away, but it's about a girl who has some like life changes, goes back to her hometown and has like a whole new, like, you know, you see people you used to know before, all that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed reading it. If you're looking for a quick read and maybe you're just like hanging out over the weekend, chilling on your like get weekend getaway or something like that. I, I read this book in about a day and a half splitting it up in between like doing some other stuff but you could probably read this book in a day um yeah it was a quick read i enjoyed it it's a good story okay so the last two items that i wanted to talk about are more like home things which i don't really think i've talked about like home things before but these are new kitchen things in my life that i wanted to share with you so if you follow me on instagram <laughs> i know this was a hot topic of discussion um i was getting a bunch of dms and yeah we were talking about it for a while i really wanted a lake crusade people sent me some dupes people sent me some like sites they've seen sales on before and everything um 
yeah, I, I've really been wanting a Le Creuset for a long time now. I was on the fence. I didn't know, like, how do I take care of this thing? What can I cook in it? Is it this extra thing I don't need? But just like my makeup brushes, I'm trying to pare down, get some really good stuff. I actually needed to replace this other pot pan i don't know what to call it um in the kitchen and it's it's similar to this only that this is an enameled cast iron and the other thing i have is like a non-stick so that's the main difference and that's kind of why i was looking at this so closely i got it in the color indigo if you don't know yet my favorite color is blue i'm also wearing a blue shirt <laughs> And um, this is the five and a half quart size. So let me put this down because it's actually kind of heavy. Okay, so I'm not saying everybody needs to buy a Le Creuset Dutch oven and that's the only Dutch oven anyone can buy. There are a lot of other great items. Um, a lot of you out there who follow me on Instagram recommended them to me. There's, I even saw some like Martha Stewart, Amazon items, Lodge I think is another brand that are maybe in the, um, $80 ish and below range whereas this guy right here was 300 something dollars I don't remember <laughs> actually Chris got this for me for my birthday this is my birthday present from him because I was just talking about it so much so I did a lot of research online and if you're wondering about what size Dutch oven Le Creuset you should get I guess it's just Dutch oven and Dutch ovens in general on the Le Creuset website they do have um, a page it's kind of like what size should I get and that's really I found that was really helpful because I didn't really know to be honest I'm like how big do I need this thing and I think sometimes I, I just think like I'll just get the biggest one because then I can do whatever I want in there but then at the same time too thinking about it, it's made out of cast iron it's heavy all that kind of stuff I didn't want to just get like an eight quart or something like that how could I even carry that thing? So yeah, I decided to go with the five and a half and basically it's like one quart per serving. And so if you're looking for maybe like a four to six serving size, um, that's what they recommend for the five and a half, if you get the five and a half. And that's enough for us. We're a two person household here. We don't eat like a ton. So this size, if I keep it down below, not fill up the whole pot, but um, we should, be able to have like you know two times leftovers after eating at once so i felt like that was a good size so that's how i made up my mind i ended up ordering it from the william sonoma website because i think it had the best like shipping situation to hawaii if you're not in hawaii that's probably not a problem for you because it did say lake crusade would ship it to you wherever you are for free um except for here which you know is constantly our problem but anyways the other home kitchen item that i got a budget one is from costco i got this kelflon wok and yeah i'm really happy with it so far actually so i've been wanting to get a wok for a really long time in my head i think i needed like a huge one i don't know why i've never owned a wok before but um it is non-stick i got it from costco it was like 20 to 25 dollars somewhere around there i don't think it was over 25 dollars so while i have my uh lake crusade pot i did get my budget wok right here from costco and um yeah we've used it a couple times so far it's been working really well i do a lot of like stir fry ish dinners which I don't know yeah we just never it never occurred to us to get a walk we we're using like some of our other stuff which at the end of the day like nobody really needs a walk you know if you have another like frying pan that's doing just a fine job that's okay too um but i did want to try one out because i've just been so curious about it and i do find that because the sides are higher even though like this flat part on the bottom sorry that's like a water spot even though this flat part at the bottom is small because the sides are higher it's easy to mix stuff around because uh, i do have that issue where like i stir too aggressively and like stuff comes out of the pan i can't be the only person that that happens to but Anyways, that was an issue for me. So now I have this walk and that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> so I'll just remember to stir a little bit more gently. And yeah, I wanted to mention this to you. This is a 10 and a half inch. Um, yeah, I think when I saw it on the shelf, I thought it looked small, but this is this is a great size for me actually all right well that's all i have to share with you in this video thank you so much for watching if you want to see more videos like this don't forget to click that subscribe button because this is going to be a monthly event let me know down in the comments if you have tried any of these things or if there are any other like home products that i should be checking out because i'm interested i'm 
trying to cook more at home this year and I've actually been doing that so pat on the back to myself <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video if you liked it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next one bye